Do we have any calling a meeting to order at 6.33? Um, <clears throat> do we have any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Yes. delegation of for select board authority to sign um, uh, for the Holmes Meadow closing. Okay. I didn't know you we were picking it. Okay. Didn't know you we were picking it back up. Do we need to go into executive ses session? Oh, we, what do you think, Seth? Probably do because we probably need an update. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. happening quickly. Um, well, just like details changed like in the last recent days. Yeah. Um, Seth lives for this stuff. I know. <laughs> and then okay, in this case, let's go to the letter. Second item is the um, on two five, the public meeting for Scribner Bridge. Does that need to be a separate meeting or can it be part of a select board meeting? It can be part of a select board. Just an agenda item. Redact that one. We don't do okay. That. okay. Uh, any other adjustments or additions? I have one. Yeah. Um, I'd like to have at least a brief discussion about establishing a town sewer service area as part of the industrial park uh, and possibly some of the other areas. Okay, we'll put it as the new number. It's part. probably going to be in a future agenda item, but just a quick explanation of what I'm talking about. Is that in relation to the possibility of having a sewage treatment plant there or just expansion no. of the, because it does presently go down to Lairway probably? Well, we'll get into that when we get there, but yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, any other additions or modifications? Okay. I feel like I need to give an update on something and I can't remember what. But it might be a light industrial park, actually. Okay. Um, reviewing invoices and orders. Anything worth calling out? Evan, you're the only one that's looked at them so far. Okay, so in that way. Nothing that I see. Okay. Um, consider approving minutes for January 2nd. Move to approve. Second. So Duncan moved to approve and Shane seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, are there any uh, select board issues or concerns? Okay. Not hearing any. Okay. Plan purchases for consideration. Nothing? No, no, no. Okay. Moving right along. Updated financials. Rosemary, you have the floor. I completely forgot to print out a budget status report. I just thought of it when I was sitting here. Okay, that's okay. But I did, in your little three sheets I gave you, I did do a um, revised 2023 cash on hand. I don't know if you want to discuss that now or later. Let's do it. You got a revised one? Yes. Did you hand that one out? Yes. It's in this packet here. Is it a stapled one? No. 
I only have two. I have Staples and Current Taxes. Uh, it's on the, back, on the back, Rosemary? No. Should it be its own sheet? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, I found it. it. Is. I found it. Just flip over your head thing. That's it. In among my staples. Oh, look at this lovely thing. All kinds of good stuff here. So it looks like you... Uh, go ahead. I um, added the uh, State Park Reserve Fund for this year. Of $3,889. Then I just <coughs> broke down the skate park grants. One is for their summer roll program, and the other one is for um, the half pike. And you had that. I don't have that. Is that an extra? Or? And Casey told me on the Let's Roll program was supposed to happen last summer. She did get an extension for to do it this summer. So that changes our actual balance from 162 and changed to 155, 462? Yes. Where is the one? Sorry. Not the, the ones, I'm getting the 162 from the one that she had sent us out. Uh, 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 December. Last fall. Okay. Yeah, September, October. Okay. So that number will have to be changed in our budget because I think we're carrying a figure right now of 162, right, Tom? Yeah. 162, 479. And it will need to be what? It'll need to be changed to this 155, 462, 83. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, Rosemary, none of the... Uh, so one of the things we have to vote on tonight is the actual reservations that we proposed in our last year's budget. And though you have, those don't get added into <coughs> that until sometime in the, sometime during this year. Yes. Right? yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about the two hundred five that's broken up, you know, reducing taxes, building some maps for your phase roll. The only thing we do, I did anything was with the reduced to taxes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you did the 1.5 already. Yeah. So would it be appropriate to make a motion at this time to approve the list of um, proposed, uh, to accept the proposed as actual shifts or transfers? Yeah, unless transfers. anyone has any objections, yeah. Or we can discuss. Sure, go ahead and make a motion. I would move to approve the proposed reservations that were in last year's town report. Um, reduced taxes, 125,000, buildings and grants, 16,057, reappraisal, 40,143, capital equipment, 12,043, grant matching funds, 12,043 for a total of 205,286. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, can, can um, I'm sure Evan is good at this. <clears throat> The capital equipment fund reserve is that recording is that in progress. Trending and I mean, we were very concerned about that a while ago. Uh, I mean, does this twelve thousand? Is it enough? No. Then why are we not addressing well, I, it? Um, I thought at our last meeting there was a discussion about Tom and Jason and I working on redoing the capital equipment reserve yeah. and reporting back to the board for yeah. feedback. Maybe but we're about to vote for well. Well, hang on. We're about to vote for an extra twelve thousand dollars on top of what we already budgeted for. Right. Okay. And the concern is not next year. The concern is 2030, 2031. I'll be dead by then. <laughs> yeah, the concern is like seven years. Well, years we're, now. we're also proposing in the current budget to add money to the capital reserve fund. I understand. My concern is I've watched, and I've been guilty of it, of kicking cans farther and farther down the road 
and if that if this twelve thousand additional doesn't get us on track, then I'm concerned because if twenty thousand is better or fifteen thousand is better, I, I I look to you guys to let me know because it feels like we're kicking this can down the road. We'll, we'll all be dead in five years. Yeah, but we can propose in our current budget. We can propose more going into the next budget. Yeah, I don't. I don't this really is, see this as kicking the can. I see this as a preventative to get us more to square, and then in next year's budget we can make more informed decisions on what to propose. When you say next year's budget, you're meaning twenty five. Right now, we're in twenty four right now. Right now. We're building 25s, and next year's but next year I'm saying in 26 will be okay. I'm, more decisions. I'm just concerned about the trends that I see happening there. With other we're together like this. I can have buddies. Okay. Any other discussion? Um. So this cash on hand, I, it doesn't look like any. Money was taken out of the emergency fund yet. The flood hadn't happened at June thirtieth. Oh, so these are balances as of June thirtieth. Correct. What are the current balances? <laughs> yeah, can we get an update? Can we get one that has the the twenty twenty three with and then like the second page for twenty twenty four? Sure. I think that would be helpful to see. So these numbers are all from June. Mm -hmm. June 30th. Thank you for writing me on that. Okay. okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Uh, anyone else have any questions on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Me. Ayes have it. Okay, what else do you have, Rosemary? And did everybody see the email I sent about the CLA? Yes. Yeah, it was very succinct and discouraging. Did you, do you know the answer to my question? No. no. I would not think it's just a replace or do the job. That's my gut. Well, it looked for a COA. But my I, question was on the COD. Yeah, that was very high, I thought. That's excessively high. So, so let's actually say what, like, what this is, the details. The COD those. is the coefficient of dispersion. dispersion and it's I mean that's like the email is, category that's not what I mean I mean what the whole email is about like a rephrase what can be triggered if your CLA is I think it's 15% 15, 15, 15, 15, yeah direction. in the direction of your COT is like say your CLA averages 100% fair market value but you have one house selling at 125,000 and a value that you think is the same at 75,000 your dispersion is too too far away and so if that dispersion gets too far apart, or if the coefficient of dispersion is the difference between classes of property, correct? Not, not compared to somebody else, or compared to the market value. It's, okay, the, but it's, it's, the, it's the disparity between like mobile homes and uh, I residential had, one or two. Oh, I had a very. I thought it was the sale price. Can I just this give a high level? Can I just give a high level of what the letter is we're referring to? So folks who are like reading minutes or watching, paying attention. Um, basically, we got a letter from the state with the 2023 equalization study results that essentially says that our common level of appraisal um, is 74.15 percent, and our COD coefficient dispersion is 22. 0.64%, which basically means that we are undervalued in our grand list values, right? That, that's the CLA part. The CLA and part, there's a right. disparity between classes of real estate within that grand list. Typically, that's trailers, mm -hmm. mobile homes. Um, so there's more detail in here, but that's essentially what it is about. And it's safe, just talking tonight with Secretary of State and with other folks, we're not an outlier. 
the whole state is being no, I, I believe Nemrec is multiple years out. Yeah. In in the requirement, the, the trigger, the fifteen percent trigger requirement, has been removed. That was removed last last year in the legislature. So we won't be getting a letter ordering us to reappraise. Well, we're not supposed to. Doesn't mean we shouldn't they still think about it, but right. we won't be ordered to. The impact that's probably going to be most immediately felt is that's going to drive our education tax rate up. Right. Yeah. Um, so if anyone has any concerns about this, talk to your legislator. <laughs> but, the, but the reality or of that penalty, value. the reality of that penalty is the intent of the penalty is to equalize the Grand West to, so in other words, if we were at 100%, we'd pay X. Yeah. If we are at 85%, we're gonna pay a penalty on that amount, which is intended to get you to the same effective tax rate. What were we last year? Low 90s. Low 90s. So we're talking about the possibility of 15% statewide property tax increase. Right. It won't be a 15% increase. No. It's, a, it's a penalty amount. And I, don't, I don't know what the there's actual a, dollar amount there's is. There's an equation. So I'm sure that, there is. I'm just yeah. trying to say. Yeah. It would make sense that it would be somewhere around 15% because <clears throat> that's how much our common level of appraisal is. Changed since last year. It probably isn't going to be that much because it's happened for every single <coughs> property in the state. Rosemary, you said we were in the 90s last year and 74 this year. How does such a big swing happen? Well, when they did their um, sales study. Yeah. Or maybe. So because 2019 dropped off. It's a three year rolling. Right, it's three year rolling average. So if we have lots of sales that are high, it drives it up. Right, right. so COVID and supply and price. demand drives up. If you have fewer sold at a higher price, then so the equalization study is essentially a comparison of what a property sold for versus what is what appraised for. Right. <coughs> Makes sense. And as Mark points out, that's out of whack all over the state. Yeah. Bringing good news, Rosemary? None so far. <laughs> I hear you're running a half marathon. Oh, yeah. Well, we really should. We really should try and figure out what the tax impact of that is going to be, and compare that to what it would be if we were at 100 percent. In that, Boy, in that's that, going to be hard to figure out, though, isn't it, Doctor? Did you see this email? I think his name is Brad Jackson at the Agency of Education. And there's like every every town has this like one drive that it would pull off of. You could download your spreadsheet. You just like plug in what your CLA is, and it would tell you. I don't know who who it is at AOE, but I'm sure it, with a couple phone calls, I could probably figure it out. There's just like a spreadsheet tax calculator for the for the education side. Well, you have to do that when you calculate the statewide education tax. Don't well, you? the state sends all that information. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, they do. It comes up July first. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but oh, I'm trying to think of the school annual reports has all that information in it, which comes out. And starts that yeah. So that well, I'm sure we can find out. Assumption, assumption would be that would be. I mean, finding out what the penalty is should be pretty easy. I mean, basically, it should fall on the, on the unified school board to inform people of what this is going to. Yeah. We should change our budget based on what's going to happen on the school side. No, we should yeah. at all. I mean, that's just, no. Yeah, we'll change the municipal budget. No. Um. Okay. So, is anyone going to take what a takeaway in action? I'm going to figure out the impact of the CLA on the education rate. I mean, the, the unified school board ought to be. Yeah, I don't feel like that. Like, I honestly don't feel like that's our job. 
yeah. I think it's a school board's job. Yeah. Well, they don't. I agree that that's could should be their activity, but they don't order the reappraisal. We do. So right. as it relates to the, whether or not we should do a reappraisal, having that information would be useful information to determine whether we should or shouldn't do a reappraisal. Yeah. Then. If it's only a couple of phone calls, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not hard. hard. Um, okay, a couple of phone calls add up, and we have an administrator who has a lot on his plate. I would like to make sure we're prioritizing. That's all. I disagree with you, but that's okay. You don't think it should prioritize? No, I think, <laughs> I think this should be a high priority. Yeah, I, think I would this agree. Should be a high priority. Priority. It gives us more information, and you know, I, I think if it sounds like we are maybe closer to where we would have been had it not been for a surge of people coming in and buying properties. During COVID okay, and sounds like you have consensus. Well, we have two people that you you folks have. Yeah, Duncan said it too. It's good. I think it's I think it's important for us to know whether or not we should be. How soon we should be doing that reappraisal? I understand. I just don't know if the priorities right now. That's all. I but think it's important that we keep it in our mind in the budget and move on. Same. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Next up is uh, Rosemary. Did you have anything else? Um, current collection of current taxes. We're down slightly from the previous two years. To date, we're at fifty-seven point twenty-eight percent collected for the year. Last year we were at almost 60% and the year before almost 61%. So it's not huge. Huge yeah. amount. A little bit. Yes. Still not coming with good news yet. I know. Here's the good news. No tobacco or liquor license. I like that now. <laughs> That's great news. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is light industrial park update. Um, I think that Randall will probably let you lead on most of this, and then you can point to others to add color. But do you want to give a like a high level what's going on? Sure. And as you look at the way that the various items are broken out, they're kind of like seven and eleven and ten. They're all kind of intertwined to some degree. Um, we've been having meetings. I think you all know that. Um, the, you know, the EDA grant application had been submitted and then they made a curating request, which just means they had questions, they had things that needed to be filled in and addressed. Uh, I had a meeting with Tori uh, to sort of go through all of those things with them. It was all mostly just like ticky tack things about revising numbers or citing a different source. We had to secure a couple of other um, letters of recommendation that they thought would strengthen the application. Um, just a few items, you know, one of the sort of hanging items was these monitoring wells. They had questions about that. It just hadn't come up in any review, and then they looked at the, you know, they took a closer look at it, and they said, oh, there's all these monitoring wells. And what's up with those? What's up with the snowmobile trail? Because that's the kind of thing that can, you know, if that gets, if that gets disrupted, that's the kind of thing that can really set the project back because there's going to be all these public hearings and all this conflict, et cetera. So they just wanted us to kind of go through and address all those in the did you know 99% of the work to do that and get that addressed for them and um, we got that you got that submitted on Friday um, and so now we're at an interesting kind of we're kind of in an interesting spot here because that's that's sort of the EDA piece we also have the EDA, uh, the NDRC piece as you know we have a signed uh, grant agreement with that piece and the thing that has been waiting to fall into place was getting provisions made for what, I don't remember what it stands for, but the NEPA review, which is a, it's a federal environmental review. Uh, and so at one point in mid-December-ish, I guess, we were kind of waiting for, Mumley had a whole series of things that they were working on, but we needed them to kind of get put together a sort of cost proposal and timeline for the NEPA review. Because uh, we had already had a conversation with NDRC and they said, this is, this is one of the few things where we can just kind of go ahead with this work. You don't actually have to put it out to bid. If you have someone that you're working with, you can go with that firm. So that's why we asked Monday to do it. Not, uh, Monday put the proposal together and we passed it along to NDRC. 
with the, you know, we thought it would be kind of a process where they would kind of go through and say, well, they say they're doing this, but in our experience, you need to do this or you need to do that. You know, basically, MBRC just sort of reviewed it. But MBRC said, yeah, it looks good. Uh, and so the implication of it looking good is that that means that it can be uh, incorporated into a revised scope of work for the grant and in a revised budget because that money can then come out of the MBRC grant money to cover the NEPA review. And the other sort of good piece about that is that that same NEPA review um, that's conducted for MBRC uh, can also serve EDA because EDA will have the same requirements. And so that's sort of like essentially where things are. There's a lot more sort of I guess sort of planning and project questions. We had a meeting with Tom to sort of figure out the sort of other outlying questions about cash flow and how these things work and how, how budgeting is going to work for all these things. And that's not necessarily something that's coming up today. It's just something that's in sort of the, the back of the back of our minds as we move forward. Uh, so the the second item here is the signature authorization for NBR scope and budget changes, and that's what that refers to. That those scope and budget changes are not about any big items. They're about incorporating the NEPA items, basically incorporating the NEPA review piece to have it be um, reimbursable and part of the grant funding. And so it's basically just saying that the select board authorizes, I presume me, or someone to make those changes and move forward. Uh, it's a question of potentially a question of strategy, and I think this is kind of where we get into a little bit of the complication piece, because this is an, this is a concern, uh, not, not a concern, but a, just something that Pat Ripley, who's working as our LDD, which is just an acronym that deals with the part of the administrative side of the grant. With and the Northern Borders. With the Northern Borders piece, right, exactly. And he just, you know, and being cautious, just wants the select board to be very aware that once the NEPA review revisions happen and becomes engaged, that's when we get issued a partial notice to proceed. Getting the partial notice to proceed is the thing that allows reimbursements to happen. Everything that gets spent on this project up until the point of this notice, well, partial notice to proceed, which then is followed by a notice to proceed, is not reimbursable. But once that we get that, it's reimbursable. The flip side of that is, is that once invoices start coming in, and once money starts being reimbursed, the sort of the train is out, you know, out on the tracks and going. So that's the piece in which the select board just needs to, um, you know, really make sure that uh, without knowing what the EDA grant application results are, that you're still 100% committed and wanting to go because once you sort of put things in motion, you're kind of like, you're going to be on the hook in a way. You could. Can you say, give an amount to that possible hook? Uh, Hundreds of thousands of dollars? Well, it depends on what your expenditures are, uh, you know, but that'll all be money that'll end up not being reimbursable if you end up sort of getting cold feet after the fact. But, you know, right right now, uh, you are looking potentially to, you know, a $396,000. Duncan sent an email out with the figures right. in it, with EDA and without EDA. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I have it open right now. And the match, if the EDA grant approved, is the 396 piece. Without it, you're you're looking at a, you know a pretty big gap there. And so then you're either going to have to take, you're either going to have to borrow the money, you're going to have to have a bond to sort of fill that gap to finish everything. So it's just about it's not like a be scared or anything like that. It's just just be aware that the EDA grant is not a is not a guaranteed thing. And so there could be this much larger gap in the match than, you know, in an ideal world, the EDA grant gets approved. And then, and then it's, it's looking, according to Duncan's numbers, like you'll have potentially $142,000 extra sort of sitting there, a sort of already set aside funding. But we have to commit before we know whether we have the EDA grant. That's the gist of it. Well... We don't know how the timing will this, work out. This is something that I think LCPC can address is, the, in theory that we're going to know, we're in, supposedly by April, EDA will have an answer. So it is a situation where you could 
if you want it, if you were feeling extra cautious and you want, you know, you could kind of wait before doing the NEPA work, you know, and sort of nibble at the edges of other work that has to be done anyway. There's some permitting work that I think you can kind of keep working on. You're already, it's already part of the contract with, with Mumley to do. So like you, the project wouldn't come to a complete standstill, but the, the NEPA piece that really sends everything into like very serious motion is a thing that you could delay. But if you do, if you do that delay, you, you, you know, you're delaying the project in total as well. But I think it was Melissa, Nicole, not to single you out, but I think you had sort of pointed out that April's really not that far off. I mean, it's, it's, you know, at this point it's two months or, well, three. Is it end of April or beginning of April? Do we know? For EPA? Yeah. Um, early April. It's a 60 oh, so. review process. So, so, so mm -hmm. with, the, with the potential adjustment to the scope and funding request, I understand that from what you're saying that as far as the NBRC, we could make that scope reimbursable, but does it actually increase the uh, amount of the grant from NBRC? Does it, does the cost of the scope add the money that we're going to get? In other words, will we be reimbursed by grant funds? Or is that NBRC grant fixed amount? That's a fixed amount. It would go towards our match, right? Uh, once the partial notice procedure is awarded, then that could start counting towards match. Um, but if down the road the full match didn't materialize, we'd be responsible to pay everything back to our employers. Did you get your answer, Mark? Yeah. Wait till April? If we get EDA, yeah. I got the answer that we'll have $142,000 left over of our ARPA. If we don't, we will need a loan of some form for 320000 Which we talked about before yeah. we even started the EDA, because right. the EDA wasn't on the table right. when we went for Northern Borders. Right. I wasn't looking for a hold. I was just trying to, is that the direct answer you were looking for? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, I think Pat, Pat's concern was, you know, it, you, you know, you've already made the commitment. You've already said, like, yeah, we're committed to this. We, we, will, we will secure this match. But just as a matter of process, I think he's saying like, you know, there is a way to kind of like hedge. It's not like you're losing, it's not like you're losing confidence. It's just a way to have like more information essentially before it's an irrevocable kind of decision or not irrevocable, but a potentially expensive decision. So that's, that's I think he's just wanting to make extra sure that like that the board is aware of that and that, you know, and for you all, I think to kind of have a decision about you know, how you want to handle it. And it's really helpful. What's the downside of not having the NEPA review available? Well, I mean, it just delays the, the project. I mean, three months possibly. The thing is that for the northern borders are, what would the deadline be? We'd have, there's a deadline we'd have to meet for construction. Maybe for construction to start. What is that deadline? Um, the project timeline said that construction could start as soon as the summer. Not yeah. No. I was thinking right. that there was that like we had to spend money by a certain date. You do. Um, but I don't remember when that is. Um, Maybe it was like the project had to be completed by a certain date. There was some. There was a deadline though. I just don't remember what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think they anticipated it could take place over two, two construction seasons, but I don't know if that begins with 24 or 25. That sounds right, because I was thinking it was tw sometime in 26. Um, and I was just not, I think it was based on when we were awarded. I don't know when it kicked off and what the actual deadline is, I guess is what I'm saying. What is the start point? Because if the start point is once they give us the go ahead to begin, then I would assume it's however many months out from that. But if the deadline is from the time that, you know, we accepted an award, then that's different. Because then we, because then things like 
stalling for EDA might not be in our best interest. Which is why I was saying I think it's really helpful that Pat's giving us that, stra that strategic view, like think about these things. Um, I'm just making note of the, the, the two different deadlines that you're asking about and what your the deadline triggers just to ask about that. Yeah. Uh, and so the state permitting requirements and possible funding gaps, I think is sort of what I was, um, that's more about, do you wanna talk about that, Melissa? If you, the funding gaps? Yeah, the, the state permitting and how there's some ancillary costs to those that. Yes, I can speak to that. Um, so as you're aware, um, I'm, I'm sure, um, that Are you know, Tyler? I'm Tom. Tom. We, sh we should all introduce ourselves. To everybody, I think. Yes. Um, so, so in April, uh, an, agree an agreement was signed with Lumley oh, to do Melissa, the sorry to interrupt. I think. Uh... Yeah, can we do introductions really quick? Oh, I'm sorry. And then also, I just want to make sure that Tim, the notes coming from that side of the room are going to be really important. Can you just make sure that the, the mic volume is loud enough? Come on up here. Uh, well, there's not enough mics, so that's a problem. Enough marks. Enough marks. He's holding the meeting. Mark Woodward, select board. Dean, you can introduce yourself. Oh, uh, Dean Locke, uh, recreation coordinator for the Town of Johnson. Corey Heller, Wilmot County Planning Commission. Seth Jensen, Memorial County Planning Commission. Melissa Manko, Memorial County Planning Commission. <clears throat> Tyler Mumley with Mumley Engineering. Perfect, thank you all. Okay, Melissa, the floor is yours. Um, so, uh, Recently, with uh, the Municipal Technical Assistance Program, um, LCPC has tried to, been trying to get up to date with, um, and also with the grants that Corey's been working on, we've been trying to get up to date with um, the status of the industrial park project. And um, as you're aware, in April, you signed a, an agreement to do some final design and permitting work with Mumley. Um, and uh, in reviewing that, there were some exclusions uh, that had to do with, you know, any additional studies um, that might be necessary um, in order to acquire state permits. Um, so that would be, we just identified that as, you know, there is some gap funding needed in order to get from final design and, you know, filling out the applications to actually acquiring state permits. Um, and it, there is a range. It all really depends on what the state's going to require. You know, if they're going to require updated traffic studies as part of Act 250, um, you know, whether, you know, upgrades to Route 15 would be necessary, what the um, ag mitigation um, fee will be. Um, so it could range anywhere from, you know, a small amount up to, you know, potentially $100,000 based on, you know, the cost estimates that are in that um, original cost estimate for Mumley, and then also contacting some individuals to see, you know, what a traffic study would, an updated traffic study would cost. So I think that's something to keep in mind and think about, um, you know, and and start planning for. Um, you know, it could be that we can work something into NBRC to cover some of those costs. Again, it would be a matter of, 
you know, having the match, you know, making sure, you know, that the town is able to secure the match, um, or if there are other funds available to cover those costs. Granted, those costs would come later on um, in the project. You need to do the final design, do the, the environmental review, things along those lines, but that's something to keep in mind that there is potentially a $100,000 funding gap. And I don't know if Tyler wants to speak more to, to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, when, when we were working through this process last, last year, a little less than a year ago, um, we had gone back and forth with the town and uh, Brian was still around at that time. So we had tried to be uh, as, as transparent and extensive on the exclusions as possible. And we tried to put some dollar amounts next to those items that we thought could be applicable. You know, we, we talked about like construction layout and we threw a rough number of five to 7,000 uh, bidding assistance at 2,500. Um, a big ticket item was uh, the likelihood of having to do uh, prime agricultural mitigation at 25,000. Um, there were other considerations like uh, in-depth traffic study, you know, potential municipal uh, utility improvements like water potential for booster pumps and such. Uh, but those were not as, as likely to, to be a thing. So we didn't put dollar numbers next to those. And we are still in the, we still have the task of, you know, discovering those things and nailing them down and seeing what, what if any additional uh, costs are gonna come about because of those items. But, um, so we tried our best to, to put the dollar figures in there uh, at that time so that the town could understand what that might be. The difference of our engineering fees uh, because at the time the agreement included uh, paying for the engineering and, and permitting fees plus the survey fees and then there was the the gap stuff that had was associated with the permit applications themselves and uh, mitigation fees for example Mark, is it likely that we're going to have to mitigate prime ag land yes almost oh, certainly God, that doesn't seem like prime ag land We'll do our best to get rid of most as many as much as as we can. Let's see if but, we change the soil classification. Yeah, things like steep slopes, ledge, wetlands, things like that can make prime ag soils go away in the eyes of the Department of Ag. But if it's classified soils and it doesn't meet other criteria, then uh, there has to be a mitigation for it. What does mitigation look like? Like, what do you mean when you say mitigation? Uh, in the world of uh, Act 50 with the Department of Ag, uh, ideally you can do on-site mitigation, which is you put away land that you own uh, so at, a mul at a mitigation. multiplier, right? So if, if soils are mapped across the state, and if it's a type of soil that is deemed agricultural, it comes with a 2 or 2.5 or 2.7 uh, or 3x multiplier. So if you're impacting that area with development, then you'd have to provide on-site mitigation. If you can't provide on-site mitigation, then you have to get approved to provide off-site mitigation, which is you basically cut a check. Uh, it goes to the Department of Ag and they put it into their program where they use that money to purchase agricultural lands across the state. We have plenty of land we can give out. And more coming out. I don't know, right? Can we just give a little, do a land swap? Homes, homes meadow. That's there, there, there is there is potential for that. There is. Okay. Yeah. And so we, we can look at that if that is an option. Uh, town has lands that can be set aside for all time. I believe the rules are. Uh, this doesn't happen very often because because of the multipliers and people don't often have extra land they can give away, so they end up cutting a check. But um, th there are some rules that go with that. So I'd, I'd have to would have to look into that a little bit more. What if it's already restricted um, I, I, I would assume that it, it wouldn't matter if it could be used like physically used for agricultural purposes but let me uh, let me confirm so we like live in you know half of the town is in a floodplain so is floodland part of that I don't think flood I don't think floodplains come into to play with prime ag soils right because half of the prime yeah. ag in the town is in the floodplain, yeah. yeah. and we're about to we're about to get more. 
Yeah. Okay. We, we do have 185 acres. We have another 10 acre parcel. Another 20 acre parcel. I can't recall if that was like on site mitigation was ever discussed back originally or not. I would have assumed that it would have been. Um, None of but, those are attached. It's not specifically on site, but it's in the same. Yeah, there's 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 opportunity for it to be a different piece of land in the same town. I like it. Doesn't sound as bad as it sounded about sorry to answer. That was my strategy. How about the when I was looking at your prints, it, it kind of looked like you might be able to buffer the deer wintering yards. At, at one point, we had uh, the A and R folks were saying we we're going to have to set aside yeah. some of our forest land as an offset to the deer wintering yards too. Is that is that still on the table, or is that? Perhaps not on the table. Uh, I can't recall at the top of my head, to be honest with you. It looks like your map showed kind of limits of the deer winter in the area. Yeah, so we said in here, it is our understanding that the town will utilize off site existing lands for mitigation uh, to deer wintering areas. Okay. So in our budget proposal right now, we have $75,000 of estimated surplus as proposed for unexpected shortfall type funding. Um, and you're talking, you know, the worst case scenario might be 100K? Potentially, yeah. It's still early. Early days, but based on on you know the exclusions that were listed, um, and making a couple phone calls, it's about that um, at this point. And we also have the over sixty eight k. It's sort of uncommitted, which is not real money yet. You know, we don't. It won't be real money until June thirtieth. It's cash this year. Oh, I know. It's estimates. Yeah. At best, you know, it's a six month estimate. So, um, I'm fine with moving forward and explaining what the rest of that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this was helpful to understand the gap areas. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Um, As for authorizing or delegating a signature person, I Uh, that was for the application of Northern Borders, not for the, not for anything after application, and then since it was EDA, not anything other than EDA. Okay. And I think that, you should, and I think that, given the unknown time frame of some of these things, I think giving it to Randall might be more, or Duncan might be more. Why not Thomas? Because he's not in the middle of all of this stuff. Yeah, he's got too much on his plate. You see the doc? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is that kind of development stuff. Yeah. Right. Lord's wishes on that one? I think giving it to Randall makes sense. I'm, I'm fine with giving it to Randall. Yeah, I, uh, I am too. I, I, what I, the only caveat I would have would be that I'm time constraints considered, it would be nice to see anything that you're going to sign in advance of, of signing it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to make the motion so you can get that time constraint right? I would move to authorize Randall as the designated signatory um, with the caveat that time permitting he send out to the full board, and I think that he's going to sign. Second. Any motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it.
MTAP stands for the Municipal Technical Assistance Program, um, and specific towns were eligible for um, to accept the program. And ultimately, what it does is it allows for regional planning commissions to um, receive funding from the agency of administration in order to assist towns. Um, that could use additional capacity. Um, Johnson was specified as one of those towns when they expanded the program. Um, in previous discussions with the town, um, the industrial park project was identified as one um, where some administrative assistance might be helpful. Um, so we've drafted a statement of work um, in order to um, help with the applications like the EDA application and any other future uh, funding applications that you might pursue um, to assist with um, administering those grants um, and any other regular, making sure that any other regular regulatory requirements are met, project management um, and implementation kind of agency, um, the town can, uh, the, the Regional Planning Commission can assist with. So we've, we've drafted um, up the statement of work. If you look at kind of the last page, it identifies um, what else LCPC can assist with in more detail, um, and it comes up with a budget. It's already been, this statement of work has already been approved by the pre-approved by the AOA. Um, ultimately, the town would need to approve it and sign off, and then the executive director of LCPC and we'd submit it. And ultimately, that allows us to access that funding and, and receive it directly from the AOA uh, reimbursement in order to um, assist. On the April 15, 2025 uh, performance period, a hard and fast date. Could, there, that, could that be extended? There has been discussion of extending it for another year. There, there what? There, there has been discussion of extending it for another year. But that's the end of the year. Like that's the we'd have to have a new agreement for the next year. Is that what you're saying? Um, all the funding that's been set aside for the program, the whole program's deadline is the 15th of April. So the contract, yeah, yeah. The contract that we have with um, AOA and the other RPC administering <coughs> ends April 15th. And so that's when the program ends ultimately, but um, the state's in discussions about extending that deadline for everyone involved. So the program ends on the 15th. On And that's based on them providing what, 21,000 or so? The number was 21,203. So at the end of that performance period of 4.15.25, would there be would the extension be the possibility of additional pools of money, or would it be if there's money left over from this twenty-one thousand two hundred three? That would just be a time extension. That's the twenty-one two hundred three is what you um, is all that's available right now. Looking at looking at attachment A, I'm I'm just thinking of. For example, I, unless I'm misunderstanding the MBRC and EDA grant requirements, I'm not sure about MBRC, but if we get approved for EDA, I believe that Catherine said that Tyler mentioned um, bid services and 
construction services, et cetera. I believe that they said that the person doing the basic design could not also provide those services. So all of that would have to be bid out as a separate package. Is that the kinds of things that LCPC would assist the town with? Yes. I don't think that was after. I think it was on the list. Yeah, well, it was. I thought it was on the list. Well, it might, it might be a Northern Borders requirement, too. I know, I know she talked about it when we did the walkthrough. It might be. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's the part that I'm a little concerned about with the April, 20, April 15, 2025 deadline is all that. Is all that going to fit within that? Are we going to be able to shoehorn out? I'll add in that time frame. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll say to that, Duncan, that um, I recognize that you know there's elements of this timeline that um, will evolve as the project evolves. If we get to April 30th and you know some of those elements that are critical to the project being successful haven't occurred yet, um, you know, we'll, we're not going to walk away from this project. Um, you know, we'll definitely meet with you and figure out how to make pieces that come after that timeline work. Um, whether there's an extension is really going to depend on what happens with other communities, um, accessing and spending down the money, what the AOA and legislature do. So that's, you know, that's the timeline for now. Um, if there's not an extension, um, we'll talk about what to do in you know, March, 2025. But we're not going to let the project die on the vine if that's the thing that needs to happen to keep it going. So, Edwin, when you were, when you were indicating that you thought we should keep the ball rolling, was that with regard to the idea of going ahead and doing an APRA review and getting that? Ready to go, or From where I said yes, but just one member. I agree. Do you agree that I'm just one member on what? I agree with that for a long time. <laughs> um, no, I agree with you. Moving forward. Um, Did we already cover EBA and RBC grant update, or was there more that we had on that? Right? No, no, that's it's basically the same as seven, five or seven. You guys didn't need a motion. That was just an update. No, we are not asking questions. Well, they didn't need anything for the update. We need, I, we need to. Um, the statement of work. The statement of work. We need to motion to approve or not, and authorize the signing. Um, I have a digital copy of it. You do? And it has my name on it. You should have it. Motion to approve the statement of work from LCPC and authorize Beth to sign and then approve the board. This is the MTAP motion. Um, Beth Hall to sign the statement of work. Yeah, the MTAP statement of work. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Could I interject just a moment, too, um, on the other item of the signature authorization? I think you consented to appointing Randall, but um, some of these agencies are based in Boston and don't necessarily understand Vermont consensus. So I think there'd be a value to there being a motion. Did I miss the motion? You did. Yeah, awesome. you made it. Yeah. Cool. I missed the motion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the you motion was authorized Randall okay. and with time constraints to yeah. see how to send it out to the board. Thank you. There's there's one other piece since Tyler's here. I'm going to put him on the front seat. Um, he has a, there's a proposal in here for a cost proposal to increase the scope of work or to add a scope of work, I guess, would be for the NEPA review. Um, when I looked at that, I was not entirely clear whether 
any of that work has already been done in either paid for or invoiced, or whether this is a total amount that you're seeking above anything that's been done. You guys back me up here, brother. That's a whole next step, correct? Well, hold on. I think we're there might be some confusion. I don't. I don't know what you're referring to, but the the additional yeah the the NEPA stuff is not part of the. It's not really conjoined to the discussion about the various invoices. This, these invoices. And if I'm wrong, these invoices are connected to the contract from April and work that fell out of scope of that contract. The NEPA piece, unless I'm... Keep going. Yeah, I have it right, right? Yeah. Like, the, the NEPA piece is something that's just separate from that. It's connected to um, it's connected to the MBRC. The, that's part of the thing that will be amended to the scope of work and to the budget. This, this, this email... The reports are matched. That was a part of that earlier discussion about spending money before we get the uh, letter to proceed. So that's that's yes, just but it, there's a part of this that says out of scope work or invoices totaling sixty eight fifteen plus additional time for NEPA, NEPA proposal. Yeah. That that yeah. I mean that's the nexus to NEPA, but it's the NEPA stuff is still. The proposed cost proposal in the first sheet is essentially separate from this one. All right. All so the answer to my question, I think, would be then that we're looking at an additional estimated cost of anywhere between ninety six hundred to thirteen thousand two to complete the NEPA review. Is that is that right? Tom? I remember what that what was that proposal amount for the NEPA? Yeah, that was that was it. Yeah, so I mean, I get the, the 6815, you know, when we we started, uh, this was, this dates back to May, uh, and it started off by doing a cost estimate as directed by Brian Story. Um, and the, the cost estimate was a, is a scope item in the original agreed upon uh, project, but that was supposed to come at the you know, end of the project <clears throat> for bidding. But Brian needed something up front to help with the uh, uh, with one of the applications, um, and then we provided some follow up support to that, and then we did some in scope work, and then we we came back and started doing some more uh, work to help with the grants, and so at the time, I I had hoped that you know the overall budget for the the base project agreement had enough kind of fluff in there that we could stay like within that budget, but as the work, the support work for the grants and such added up. Uh, we kind of realized, like, hey, we're we, we kind of needed to, to address this as out of scope costs that we've been incurring to help with the grants and, and such. And so that's that sixty eight fifteen is is what is all the out of scope work that has been done to date since last May, uh, supporting that. Is that? Okay, you just confused me more. So, so the, the new proposal that has the between ninety six and thirteen two yeah. is above and beyond anything that's been done under the sixty eight fifteen. Correct. Right. The right. sixty eight fifteen we approved forty two thousand dollars of our money, something like that. Forty six. Forty six. <laughs> Bring me some good bills here. Come on. <laughs> So we need to approve sixty hundred dollars above that, and then approve ninety six to thirteen. Two. No, no, no. <coughs> so trying to emphasize this this document is accounted for or will be accounted for with the amended scope of work and budget for the NDRC grants. This is work that is going to fall after the partial notice to proceed to be reimbursed by the grant. So we don't need to approve that tonight. No. Okay. As far I mean, I don't, I don't think you need to approve that. No, this email with this associated account, accounting of invoices is about the prior contract that existed in April and work that fell outside the scope of that contract. It just it's just kind of weird because 
two of the numbers line up, so it makes it look like they're related. I think there's a ninety six hundred dollar figure in both of them, but that, that's just like a weird. Uh, anyway, but if if we subsequently approve this proposal, then our budget, our forty six five, is not going to increase by sixty eight fifteen. Is that correct? Um, if this, if and when this proposal, the NEPA proposal takes place, that's going to be reimbursable. That's going to be reimbursable expenses. What happens here is not reimbursable expenses because this is connected to work, you know, and that was initiated and accounted for prior to the partial notice received in the UFC. Maybe I'm not explaining myself very clearly. I probably not. I'm I'm probably not. I guess what I'm seeing in that in that analysis of prior invoices is a certain amount of time and effort has been devoted that has a dollar amount attached to it in the form of an invoice for things related to the scope of work related to NEPA review. We also have a proposal, which I understand completely is fully reimbursable in if approved, can be considered part of our town match. I guess what I don't want to do is double pay for what's already been done. So as long as, as long as. So you're our, asking how are we pulling this stuff out of this email that's NECA related and transferring it over. And transferring it over. So are, are we getting, I guess what I don't want to see is a bill from you at some point saying, your 46.5 bill has increased by 68.15 because we did this work. <coughs> if, if, the, if the ultimate goal is your 46.5 is going to be covered if we approve the scope of work up to 13.2, I'm all good. But if it's going to cost us 13.2 plus 68.15, I got, I got heartburn all of a sudden. Um, and does the timing of all of it matter? So just for some clarification, so the sixty-eight fifteen, that was work that was conducted as as Tyler had mentioned in order to um, gather information for the MBRC EDA and also develop the cost estimate. Not do the NEPA work, but develop the cost estimate for the NEPA which is required for NBRC and EDA. And all that work has already been done and it's been invoiced and paid already. Just but presumably that work is out of scope work, yep. taking away from in scope work. Um, so my, my question ultimately is, is that 6815 ultimately gonna be reflected in an increase in our total budget of 46.5? Tyler's probably the only one that can answer that. The answer right now is yes. That's that's incurred costs for out of scope items. So that that sixty eight fifteen was not part of the original uh, thirty four five plus twelve. Yeah, that's your forty. That's your forty six five. I have some tums in the car. Yeah. Okay. okay. I might need them. Um, so so that sixty eight fifteen is not in essence included in the NEPA, NEPA review proposal. That's strictly additional cost. To, to me, on my end, I don't know the NEPA stuff. I don't know what how that is working on your end, but I'm saying, yes, the 6815 is out of scope cost that we have incurred to date. That would be above and beyond the 465. It's out of scope for them because out of that original grade measure. Yeah, but right. are we going to so get I agree credit that's against? Our, that's our problem, not his problem. But are you going to get a credit against? <laughs> this invoice for that amount because it's less work that you have to do to complete the NEPA review. Oh, is, well, maybe the question is, is it less work? Like what's the, yeah. you know, what contributes to, does it reduce that original um, quote that you provided the costs? No, I don't, I don't think I, so. I loop around on this and get clarification and then come back in two weeks. There's nothing pressing for those types of pieces there. Seems like there's like a disconnect. Maybe like well, I think we were just talking it through. I think it's fine. Some of the notes. Um, but I think I, we just but got the answer, we just got the answer. The answer is. I mean, if there's a, if there's a way to get sixty eight fifteen somehow pushed off into some other bucket, then we, we're happy to work with you to try to figure out how to do that. I, 
I get from my from my perspective is that uh, we we just we provided sixty eight fifteen worth of uh, work that was part of you know the project, but not part of the original agreed upon scope. And and when we started doing these things, my hope was that it, it we could hide it underneath that original agreement and not go above our original agreement. But you know it's it's come out to sixteen eight sixty eight hundred, which is you know a decent amount of, of money. And I'd love to tell you that we could do all the rest of the work and stay within the original budget of 46.5, but with a number like 68.15, it's, that's just too much to be able to make that promise. Does that make sense? So in scope work, you've done $1,860 for the date. Yes. And you've done five times that work out of scope. Yes. How? Many times are you going to come back to us for this? Well, I mean, it's on us. We go to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> the I, is like, I would, I would, if you don't need any more help with things that aren't in the in our scope, then then zero. I mean, I guess we were we were just trying to be good stewards and help support what needed to be done. The reality with is regard like to the grants and such. Every time we need something, so that's on us. Like, yeah. the thing we need to do is if we're going to go to Mumbly and ask for assistance with something, we need to say, is this part of the scope? If it's not part of the scope, then it comes back and we say, well, wait a minute, do we want Mumbly to do this? Like, I think that's the piece that needs to happen. It's not, it's not, it's for us to control. Like, we're the ones who are asking for assistance. Yeah. It's basically like change orders that we're initiating. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if I could go back in time, then I probably, I sh we should have raised a flag and been like, Hey, we all understand this is not part of the original agreement, and let's make sure everybody's okay with spending time and effort on it. But you know, some of it was kind of in a rush and needed to get some things done, and you know, we just were ready to respond and help get those things done. And um, when I took a took a second and went back and, and added it up, it realized it was a good chunk of change. Here we are. So you have you have one bullet here that. Um, Estimated additional effort to complete 1,500. <coughs> Luke is actively working on the NEPA, NEPA proposal. Would that 1,000 to 1,500 be covered under the uh, the new the, the additional scope of work, or are we looking at an additional possible 1,000 to 1,500 above the 6,800? Uh. <clears throat> Above. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I haven't sent. Uh... Yeah, that was the last invoice. I don't think we sent the invoice then, so I think there is. I think there is a little bit outstanding since we finalized the NEPA proposal. Yeah, the date of this email is Thursday. <clears throat> December 14th. And I'm, I'm assuming, Tyler, that these comments in red, maybe you don't have this in front of you, but the comments in red are from Tyler? Yep. It's a response? Or from on the name. Okay. Just sort of explaining what they're going to the invoices for us. It's going to be a pain in the ass, but I'm just trying to get a handle on you know. What we're, what we're actually looking at for extra costs. Yeah, um, it, that's a good question. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. I'm just, right now, I, I can't remember exactly where we stand with what work has been. I don't I don't think that I've sent an invoice since then with any of the cleanup that we finished. So that the last yeah, I have, the, I have the, the copy of the email. I'm just trying to remember uh, what I've done invoicing-wise since then. I might be able to find out in the meantime, thanks to technology. Yeah. But. Well, you know, you, you guys know what my question is. Maybe you can circle around with Tyler and sort it all out. Under your bullet from May, there's a sub bullet to a sub bullet. It says it is likely the revised cost estimate will be necessary at the end of the project. Well, yeah, so the original um, April agreement was based on the proposal. The proposal included 
uh, $2,000 for a cost estimate to be completed, but that's something that you would do at the end of the project once we have the plans finalized and permits finalized and ready to go to bid so you know what your cost estimate is for the project or to help with you know help with getting funding and such so that was that was a line of scope a scope item that we thought would come you know at the end of the project but uh brian had reached out in april of last year and said that they needed that uh, that cost estimate then in order to proceed with with something one of the grant we applications not from the original 2010 right so we went ahead and did it again this is one of those things where i was like well i guess it's kind of included as a a bullet item and so maybe that 1910 from from may maybe that could be excluded from the 6815 but i included it because it's very likely that we're going to need to do an updated cost estimate you know later once we have the plans and design and things finalized for example if there were improvements required to Route 15 that would go in your final cost yes yeah, exactly so things like that So just looking at our invoices that we have in front of us today, tonight, we have two monthly invoices. Um, one is for um, CAD, field tech, drafting, existing conditions in the survey, <clears throat> freight 55, project manager work on stormwater application materials, design revisions, storm tech sizing, uh, tech, storm tech sizing, et cetera, uh, 2130. And then principal engineer product coordination review for 20 for a total of $3,405. And then there's a second for engineering assistance for the IPAC letter research at $45. Project management on review grant items, coordinate engineering report, preliminary engineering report, called with Randall Torrey regarding EDA and Northern Borders email to town reviewing the NEPA requirements and then correspondence regarding grants. Um, that invoice is $14.95. So just to talk about current. So it sounds like one of them is in scope and one of them is out of scope? I would think so, yeah. One of those you said might have been the uh, is the Vermont Electric Co-op. Uh, uh, the first one is, this, is the electric, yeah, it is. Yep, sorry, that is, yeah, the other one's industrial park. So fourteen ninety five for industrial park on that one. Probably out of scope. It is out of scope. Or is that everything in your addition? That's what estimated that? additional efforts to complete. One thousand to fifteen hundred, because it's off close fifteen hundred. Or is there gonna be more? That's what I need to I need to I need to find that out and tell you. I I, I don't want to do that right now. I'm trying to figure it out, but yeah. I'd be appreciated if I could figure it out at the office, then I can follow up. Yeah. <coughs> uh, if we sign the MTAP agreement, LCPC can help. Yeah, yeah the MTAP agreement I refer to as Federal Grant Water Wings for Randall. That's what, they, <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah. Okay, um, so we're through. Number 11 and number 12 is the Climate Economy Resilient Communities Program. All right, this should be separate. Yep. Maybe we should actually, sorry, that's not Industrial Park, is it? No. Um, maybe we should talk really quickly about the town sewer service area topic and then go to the next. Yeah, sure. That would, might be a good idea with LCPC and everybody here. Yep. So, um, as everybody knows from looking at the prints and plans, there is a little wedge of property. On that within that industrial park that is in the town, not in the north. So it's my belief that we should discuss and perhaps put it on a, a, a future agenda item to create a town sewer service area for that little wedge of parcel. And that town sewer service area would allow village sewer to extend into that physical land to allow a hookup for potential customers or clients within that 
within that town's reserve area. Right now, the village ordinance prohibits uh, them from going into, going outside the village boundaries. The town sewer service area agreement that we had before allows village connections within a map identified area. Um, so it's my belief that we should, that we need to, and should create a town sewer service area specifically related to that little wedge of land that is in the town. Well, that's the wedge that's going to have the wastewater treatment. So. No, I was not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> there would already be sewer right there. Isn't it? Yeah. It's right here. It's the that's the boundary. Yeah. yeah. So it's that it's that wedge of property that I'm talking about. And I, you know, mainly I wanted to get it out there as so we can set it up as an action agenda item. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it seems pretty simple. It is the the issue that we might need. I think we can probably designate that on our own volition. Um, the trustees may, however, have to do something on their side to recognize the town sewer service area and allow connections yeah. to be consistent with their ordinance. Yeah. And we can, you know, we can think about whether that should be a joint, you know, a joint agreement or not. Um, I don't know that it has to be. We're not asking for any actual allocation. The original town sewer service area, we, we got 25,000 gallons. Of capacity allocated to that town sewer service area. In this case, I don't think we need to do that, so it may not require village approval per se, but they might have to do something on their end too. Yeah. Sounds like a good agenda item. I'm going to follow up there and figure out what needs to happen with timelines. Yeah, and if you can dig out copies, Rosemary, you must have copies of the original town sewer service areas. If we could get that language and put that together and sort of draft, maybe even draft a, you know, an agreement. Yeah. And be ready to, you know, within the next couple of meetings to act on it. All right. services. Johnson had a, sort of, what they call a community visit from ECRD about 20 years ago. And it, seemed, it seemed like maybe it's been, you know, long enough and enough things have happened in Johnson that there might be a need to have this kind of conversation again with the Florida Minimum Bank. Well, uh, short, short that up, um, that's the thing that we're not really a great candidate for just because they are already booked out and they're not really able to kind of get in there and get it. So they were sort of brainstorming the other approaches, other things, other services they to us. And it's interesting because, again, you know, the, the, the title of this sounds much more highly uh, circumscribed than it actually turns out to be. You know, it's climate economy, resilient communities, so it sounds like it's got to be very specifically focused. They, they can be focused, but in the three examples you know, they have on their website, they have this thing, they work with Community Ferry, and basically they formed a post-flood action plan for the community. Um, so it fits more like clearly in that framework. But when they worked with um, Sharon, they worked with Sharon, and Sharon came up with three sort of com community priorities and then an action plans related to them. And you know, one of the one of the bullet items there is address substance abuse and addiction, which doesn't seem like it falls under any of those things in the way we might normally think about it. Um, and also expanding coordinated outdoor recreation and trails that fits, etc. And then there was also a a multi-municipality uh, effort where they helped a whole bunch of White River Valley communities um, work collaboratively to hire a energy coordinator that was shared, that shared position as well as municipalities. Um, so the whole point of this is basically just applying to this, which they basically said, like, you should apply to this. You're kind of like, you're, you want to help you, we want to find a way to kind of help you. Um, and 
this this program, then you know we can have discussions prior to the facilitation. To, you know, school like Tom has some, some ideas for things that he uh, is interested in, and there's some real potential for this program to work. You know, for Tom's for Tom's interest in the conversation. Um, anyway, it doesn't cost us anything. We just I we just apply, and they can come and provide the services, and it's kind of up to us to figure out or decide what we want them to help us do. Uh, I discussed this a little bit with Beth, and I mean, you know, basically help you sort of coordinate, come up with an action plan, and get groups, community, existing community groups to work together and say, okay, here's the three things that we're going to do, here's who's going to do them, et cetera, et cetera, and go through that process and just like coordinate all that and all the people together and uh, facilitate it. Do you need anything from us? I like what you're saying. I just, I just need authorization to apply. A deadline's tomorrow. <laughs> so, I, I would move to have Randall apply for this community economic resilience. Is it a grant or is it? It's a facilitation service. Facilitation we'll services. Yeah, we'll call it. I'll move that we do that. I'm excited okay. by it. Second. All in favor? Can I ask a question before we go? Sure. Ahead? Um, I think it all sounds great. My only question would be, do you have the capacity to assist us with this? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And like, I've been doing sort of background kind of work in a way related to it because it's another thing, again, that both Tom and I have been kind of coming up from different angles. We've been in discussions with UVM uh, about, you know, they have service learning and internship possibilities uh, for students, you know, both the undergraduate and graduate level. Um, so there's also the ability to then bring in other folks who might be able to add some capacity, you know, service learning opportunity, which you know, in my mind is a win-win for everyone because it gets you some added administrative help, gets them you know, real work, real work experience working on real projects on municipalities, et cetera. So all of this stuff, this is just a, this piece of it's just an exploratory piece to figure it out, but it could tie into a lot of other opportunities Thank you, Randall. Cool. Good luck pulling this off. It's due tomorrow. Yeah, it's it's not. It's, it's, it's good. We're good. He's already got it mostly filled out. I don't have to. It's only it's a half tomorrow. page application. Um, okay. Randall, I think that was your last topic. Anyone else got anything for Randall? I just want to thank him for coming in. And it's nice to see a face once in a while. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I do have one other, one other thing, just as a very quick, sorry, to it's not an agenda, item, but it's just a brief thing. Um, conversations with Sterling Markets ongoing. We had, Seth and I had a meeting with them two weeks ago, maybe? I think so. Someone yeah. from Pomerlo. It means Pomerlo, not Sterling Markets. Sterling Market. No, right, right, no. Yeah. Yeah. Pomerlo Real Estate. Yeah. Uh, Drew Axler from the, we had a meeting with him to sort of run through all Options. I had I had a conversation with Seth before we were sort of summarized them, but then because of scheduling and stuff, we took a while to get to their availability to be able to have come and ask questions and learn more about the programs. Uh, we have a call um, tomorrow. We meaning myself, Drew from Pomerlo, and folks at uh, USDA to explore this uh, loan program. We have a call about that tomorrow. Anyway, that's just to see that there's other things. Um, on the other things note, that was something I wanted to bring up and update everyone on. Two things actually, but the first thing is that uh, Randall and I had a conversation back in December with um, Gary Holloway from the state he's he's economic in development in and community and something else. Yeah, he's in a whole bunch of different things, but basically he has brought a bunch of different people together, like um, um, Glenn, uh, Ben the Doyle, from, Doyle the from the Preservation Trust, the Mount Community Foundation, many, many, many others, like lots of different people from different agencies and different private philanthropy um, organizations. And again, they just wanted to hear about how Johnson was doing, you know, what how could we help? We talked about the store at the time. We talked about um, community events and bringing people together. Um, I brought up, like, I think we should have community events that aren't just kid-based. Like, there's 
lots of things that happen, but they tend to be focused around kids, um, which is great. But like, how do we bring people together who aren't kids um, or are kids at heart? <laughs> um, so anyway, it just let it's just good to keep those connections. Number one and two to help. Um, utilize whatever services they can provide or money they can provide to help us do things in the community, so. And, and uh, Vermont Community Foundation, as a result of that, is we're in contact with them, but you didn't send me an email, by the way. Oh, I did that day, but okay. Or I, I didn't Probably. see it, if you did. Anyway. Um, so, Vermont Community Foundation, I have contacted me to talk again after that and wanted to um, set up something they wanted to set up like a small group a small task force to help do something community or uh, community related they wanted to not drive it they want us to drive it but i've handed over to randall to say you know if there's anything that Vermont community foundation can help with here's the contact but apparently i left out the latter, the latter part um but there we are. um so the other thing is that I was, and Seth was, I didn't know until I got there, invited to speak to uh, a Senate, Senate committee. What is the Senate committee that's about there? Um, housing and Economic Development. Okay. It's Sounds Keisha good. Ron, Keisha Ron. Yep. Um, and you know, so many of these invitations, you just get confused about which one's which. And... Actually, I get confused by people and, and titles often, yes. Uh, but anyway, we just testified to you know where Johnson was as our recovery against the flood. Did they know where we were physically? They they've been here currently. Yeah, Keisha's yeah. been here. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who they were here with. Maybe were you here with them? No. You don't know. Um, Maybe. Um, but anyway, they've been to Johnson um, following the flood. Oh, uh, you know, not immediately following. Um, they were in Jenna's practice. Yeah, her, her but I think my big, like, the thing I tried to really drive home was that we need to st stop reacting and spending money and mm -hmm. and reacting and spending money over and over and over again and spending far more money than we would spend if we proactively actually built buildings in flooded flood areas that were raised or somehow could withstand flooding events. Um, tried to say that a couple of times. I think I said it more eloquently there than I did here. It was uh, very eloquent there. <laughs> uh, but that was the thing I wanted to really drive home because you're not just spending more money, you're also re-traumatizing the community over and over again. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's the two things I tried to do. Sounds like you represented us well. Um, okay, Seth, do you want to talk about what you, what you, Seth spoke before I spoke, I had no idea he was going to be there when I got there, he was already, like, talking about what they were, what LCPC is doing. Um, do you want to take, like, two seconds? Sure, so, um, I spoke briefly about the impacts in Johnson as well as Jeffersonville, Cambridge, and Wilcutt, um, and then I think Beth the fact that we didn't rehearse uh, is great because we <laughs> said largely similar things um, about programmatic um, things the state could do to make us more resilient and less reactive. Um, and um, I think Beth talked about that issue from you know a very local sort of perspective. I talked about some of the policy issues. Um, and given that it was housing, I also talked about the need for both short-term and long-term support for um, housing, uh, both recovery housing and then housing that is outside of the, the flood plain, um and affordable to the average Vermonter. And that committee was particularly responsive. Um, there are other committees um, that um, hopefully will be as responsive as the session goes on to that issue. We shall so want to get the control of the purse strings that we really want to get the attention mm -hmm. on. Right. Right. Well, the Senator in our Senator Ron Hinsdale is on finance committee. Mm -hmm. The senators on two committees, and I happen to know for a fact that she referenced the testimony in that committee uh, because they, I think they had, um, I think Ted Brady was there, maybe yeah. 
members of the American Education Finance Committee laying out the you know, municipal need, and then she brought up, like, yeah, we just had people on our committee you know, telling us their stories, and like, well, we need like, all these budget shortfalls, yeah, 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 anyway. So it didn't just go in, at least that one specific thing didn't just go into a black hole, it got brought out into another thing. So. Whether there's a black hole at the end of that one or not. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a story. laughs> Okay, <clears throat> good stuff. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, municipal building and library repair. So, um, there are two contractors attended the uh, mandatory site visit, and uh, both have gotten back to me and said that it's they don't have there's not enough time to get the final numbers from the outside vendors to put together a full price and request an extension. Um, and is that okay? Who are the two contractors? Uh, Dean Petro and there's a new Zach for uh, I want to say River Valley Construction. It's Brian Rollinitis, but it's yeah, his cool. company name. Okay. Um, and then Dale Petro is president for Dale Petro. Dean Petro and Bank. How much time do you need? Initially, they said Wednesday. Um, I spoke with them last Thursday. You mean talk last Wednesday or this Wednesday? This Wednesday. However, I need to also, uh, this brings me to number B, letter B, is I have to update the way the RFP was written. We had this like piece of paper in the back that had like a list of items to put on. There are things that are missing and unclear. The library side is good. The municipal side needs to be modified to add uh, the price to be bonded, because it's over 250000 so that's gonna be an additional cost to the contractor, and um, that's a federal requirement. Um, the exterior mechanicals need to be raised at the municipal building above that three foot um, line, and the windows are already smaller there, so it should not affect The windows you. are what, Brian? Uh, the windows are already raised. and They're high enough up, so. Exactly, so it's not. Um, they wanted the floodgates priced out so that um, so that the floodgate the price for the floodgates is is separate from the rest of the mitigation work and mobilization, which is um, kind of getting everything out out of the building and then everything back into the building. And so having all those pieces laid out, um, I'm waiting till tomorrow to meet with Ron just to approve my final updated. Um, create an addendum, and I can put it online, send it out to the all interested parties, and then <coughs> I need to check with them tomorrow, see if Wednesday is good enough. I think it would be in our best interest to maybe go have a special meeting uh, with three select board members or more, uh, maybe next Monday, maybe, but like, we could have a couple days just to make sure that we don't need a second extension. Um, so repair and mitigation are one RFP. It's one contract with two invoices. So like there's repair, the, the way FEMA requires invoicing to be is you need a price to put the building back the way that it was. Yeah, but not for the invoicing for the RFP side. Yeah, so when the, when the bid comes back, um, FEMA requires two bids, one bid prices for each building. So each building has, will have two prices coming back. One, it puts the building back the way that it was. That's the baseline. Yeah. value and then the second bid is the work that they're actually going to do and so say this is a hundred thousand the second bid will include putting it back to the way that it was with some modification for maybe new flooring maybe new this maybe new that and then the outside mitigation but you need this one in order to set the value of this one because this is a hundred percent of this so if this is a hundred thousand you get two hundred thousand dollars over here so you have to have that first one for FEMA to then set the value. And both will be audited by CRC. But so they just need um, they just need a little more time. And so I'm asking the board to do we have to if we're extending the time frame for submission of bids, does that open it up to anybody else that might want to submit a bid? My I do not believe so because there was a mandatory site visit. And nobody else showed up. If we had an, if we had additional site visits, um, then I think you would, when you open them up, then that extension would apply to everybody. But we had no additional site visits. We 
is a one site visit. Are the um, additional clarifications in the RFP related to questions that you had submitted to you by the contractors? Um, maybe. I'll go online and verify that. I want to say some of them, yes. Um, but the questions that came over the phone are going to be updated online as well. Yeah, not, not a big deal. Yeah, but yes. Um, I don't know if they're part of the original questions or questions that were arrived after the site visit. Um, and that's kind of part of that conversation with Ron. Is like, do I have to post all secondary questions, only questions from the site visit, or do I have to post all follow-up questions as well? And that's, you know, so I'm going to let him tell me what to do on that. But in theory, you're, the changes you want to make to the clarifications to the RFP <coughs> cover all of the questions that were raised. Correct. Yep. So what do you think you need from us? Uh, just the, I think if, if you could make a formal motion to extend the deadline for to receive bids to a day, in the, they were due today, and we don't have any, which means we'd have to put it, without this extension, we have to put it back out to bid, I believe. Um, but like, we haven't received any numbers, we don't even know if we have to do that. So if we just could extend it till a time when you guys are going to meet, or until February 5th at the next select board meeting, whatever, that's up. I can't meet before the fifth of July. Yeah, yeah, we have to meet. To the let's the do the meeting. let's do the next scheduled meeting. I mean, these guys, if they can't get their vendors, it's not on that. Yeah, they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna get. I mean, it isn't like people are lining up to do this work. Can we authorize? Because that would do it. <laughs> set the date based on discussions with the. But not later than our next regular, you know, our next meeting. Well, our next meeting is the fifth. Yeah, but we're gonna have to meet before that. I mean, we don't we don't have to take action on accepting a bid until the fifth, do we? No, no. I mean, and I think um, just tell just tell me what you want. Well, I, if you would make a motion to be, if we could just uh, review and award bids at, along with. The motion to, because that's that's going to be a pretty short to review and award that bid. It's going to be a pretty short. You know, you're either going to say yes, you want it, or no, we don't, right? Yeah. And do that at the same time as a warning. Do we have a date to do that warning piece? Can we do that, that right? Okay. We're going to drop that date to 29th, right? I could be the 25. I could be the 25. I could be next Monday. 22nd. Yeah. Want to make it? What about you, Mark? You're a world well, traveler, so. I know. I don't think I'm going to You left town. You left town this week? But yeah. No way. I did. You did. I saw pictures. You went to Philadelphia. Um, yeah, next Monday. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Sensing some sarcasm right now. <laughs> I can be there. You're anywhere. I, yeah, I think I can be there. Um, All right. I'll is that going to give, is that going to give you enough time to review any <coughs> recommendations. I, I'd really love to see their proposals before we get to the meeting. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'd really like you and Ron to have an opportunity to review and make recommendations prior to the meeting. Why don't we make them do this Friday? Is that the 19th? Just pull you, that think, up. you think they're going to have them? You think their vendors are going to have them? No. Did, well, I talked to him on Friday morning. And he said Wednesday at the latest. Okay. Yeah, uh, I've heard that before. So we that's kind of where I was, you know, suggesting that we give time and latitude to set a date for okay. receipt of the bids. I mean, based on discussions with a contractor. What if we make them do the twenty second, and I just hand them out to you guys at that meeting? You have to make a decision. It'll be an agenda item. But if they come in earlier, great. If they don't, they at least that's due date. Okay. Motion to extend the due date for bids to the municipal building and library RFPs to January 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Not 6.30 earlier. Are we four 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 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Yeah. The latest. Second. 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 
Okay, so four o'clock. Sec, we have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Did not tell me we were going to meet at four o'clock. No, we meet at six or seven. We're meeting at six thirty. Yeah, I was thinking we could meet at six instead of six thirty. We meet at four thirty. That's my daughter's birthday. I mean, yeah. Well, which birthday, you know? Yeah, they're all important, but do you want, want a different time? You don't get it. Uh, do you want a different time? Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll find out from her what she's... We can do the meeting well, on the 23rd. We just sent the RFP receiving date. I can't. Well, you guys can. I can't do it on the 23rd. All right, so at the end of the meeting, we're going to figure out what we're meeting next. No. Oh, my God. We're meeting at 6 o'clock. Well, we can't. Just, I mean, let's just put it on for six o'clock. Yeah, I mean, but somebody can warm, right up until the. I mean, we can't approve the warning on the twenty second anyway, can we? Because somebody could submit a petition right up until the 29th, right? No, no, no. It's due to the printer on the twenty ninth. Oh, it's due to the printer. I want to say the seventeenth is forty five days. Oh, yeah. 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 Forty seven days. Wait, when is the petition deadline then? Petition for money is separate from petition for. Officers. Officers okay. is the 29th. Officers has to go to the printer too, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, what I What about petition. articles on the warning? Somebody petitioning an article on the warning? It's 45 days. Which yeah, is 47 days for the petition. Yeah. You have two days to approve it. But it has to be published for, it has to be posted 45 days. 47 days before so, town meeting? Which I think is 17th. I think it's January 17th. So I think, I think we're, that's this week. Let's, I don't want to bet. I don't want to. I don't want to guess. Hold on. I got to pull up some petitions. What is for it? money petitions? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're gonna ask for money? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Select board pay. Increase last year. So we just need to. All right. Come on. Don't get greedy. We need to take a reduction. <laughs> I'm Drew. You go first, Evan. <clears throat> he already did. So does. January 18th. I already did. That's the that's the drop dead date. Yes. Statutory deadline. Yeah. That's for articles and yeah. That's for an article. So we'll we'll know all, a lot of Jews will be will be known for party eighteen this week. Sweet. Evan, you're you're not keeping us on time. Yes. Uh, yes. Have you talked with the elementary school? To make sure we have the gym that day. I know that was up in the air. How come? I don't know because there wasn't a ton of communication, and we don't own the building. It's written into the so agreement for the school. Is that, that, is that the same? Yeah, there's no school that day. I know that there's no school. Is, what is the supervisory union? Memorial Marks. Is it going to be on supervisory? So Tom has a, a C under his 13 building library repair. Oh, uh, correct. Tom has a C under his. Yes. Yeah. Um, this also I would like a motion. Um, wait, wait, what are you talking about? Under so the 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 law, There's a so we did A B, oh. which is the addendum and the deadline extension. But C is, um, it's high because of the, the cost of this project, we're looking at upwards of $500,000. It's highly recommended to have the town attorney review the contract for this project. This review is to ensure compliance with federal contract of about $250,000. Okay, um, the cost of this review is reimbursable by FEMA at the reimbursable rate of you know, 92.5% of the state. I would move to have the municipal attorney review any contracts uh, proposed or used for this project. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Aye. Thank you for that out. I did read it and I promptly forgot. Thank you for that motion. All right, and the warning, so I did a little memo that's in the back of your packet with, all I did was I, Rosemary and I talked today, I pulled off the spreadsheet, and 
and dreamt up some stuff and just typed up items and you guys can say yay, nay. But I think we're gonna next the next one. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Alright, you want me to save it on the spreadsheet for future use or make it forever? Where's the memo? What are you what are you Oh, in the, in the back of the packet is a memo. Oh, you in your hand. Oh. The actual article is that it's just ambulance. Yeah, that's, that's a rosemary really holding point. Yeah. So we met, so she put little holding notes in. and But this is the draft. And you don't want town clerk, town treasurer. You want to wait until the drop dead date. Yeah, I think we need to talk about the voters reject it, but then we will need to find somebody that lives in town to do it. Like, it might be worth doing, like... Well, your term ends in 26. That's when the proposal to do it is... I wouldn't... I don't think we should do it in 26. I think we should do it town meeting 25. And then draft a contract for a year's worth of work as our employment. Because I think... Rosemary and I were talking, we think that if you... When the voters vote to do it in 25, the town has 30 days to appoint the town clerk. So that means to, to have an employment contract lined up for her for her last year so we don't like cut it short. Like that's the fear, it's like you don't want to, you know, Rosemary should have that satisfaction and know she has a job for the last year of term, right? Did you ever question it? You never know. <laughs> don't vote from my point of view. Well, whatever don't. we have to do to make you happy. Yeah, we should do it for that last year, but I, I think waiting until, until 26 puts everybody in a, in a bond. 25, I think, is, is yeah, I think 26 is a mistake for sure. Yeah. In case you didn't hear my sarcasm when I was yeah. saying it earlier. I think 25 is a mistake. Not that the voters will vote it down, but they at least have the opportunity to vote it down this year, and we can fix whatever issues they may have for next year. Yeah. I have the unpopular voice there, so mix them and yeah. we'll go off the mix. Do you, um, I mean, there is such a value to the checks and balances of an elected clerk treasurer, but the job has grown substantially in responsibility from 10, 12 years ago, and that's like one of the troubles a lot of towns are having, is filling the seat with qualified candidates is harder for smaller towns. And so, it, it's, it's six, if you have somebody lined up who's qualified and can be voted in, Best to keep them voted in, but if you don't, you kind of need to hire out of town. You know, it's so much, it's such a bigger job than it was. You know. Well, we, I mean, not necessarily hire out of town, but hire rather than elect. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're just losing the checks and balances of equal powers a little bit, but you know, but Rosemary right now is the only single acting officer for the town. But that's the only, you know, it's the only thing you're losing by having it is you no longer have a single acting officer to kind of check a select board if, if needed. You know, I'm not saying you guys need to get checked, but <laughs> yeah. Well, we technically we we elect you as clerk and separately as treasurer. You so could do one without the other. You could do one without the other. So, I mean, we we could still elect a clerk and, and hire, hire a treasurer. A hire a treasurer. A treasurer. I don't know if you have feelings about that one way or the other, but um, to me it would be much harder to fill the treasurer position than the clerk position. Yeah, yeah, yeah with a qualified yeah. person. Yeah. 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 And honestly the clerk can do less damage <laughs> than the treasurer can. That's right. <laughs> you know, with the exception of land records. Land I mean, records and you know, you're you know, you're the highest uh, Election elections, office. yeah. The election officials run, you know, proper running of the elections in the land records. I mean, we, is the main categories for that position, right? And you could get it if you hired a clerk who did just didn't record any land records. The attorneys are going to get awful pissed off, awful quick. Yeah, what well, I was going to say, like running an election the wrong way, and the attorneys or running are going to get pretty pissed too. So, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think the opportunities for finding a qualified person to run for clerk is going to be easier than it is to hire finding a qualified person to do the treasurer's work just because it's got so much more I mean, it's, there are towns that hire finance officers and then keep an elected treasurer 
but really the treasurer is just like reconciling, you know, doing like the smaller tasks. I think we should do, yeah, I think yeah. that we get to a point, that point of getting someone new, the board should consider having somebody who's treasurer. I don't know if the board can have a treasurer on board. Most boards have a treasurer. Select boards I don't think do. They have selected well, people, right? Yeah, but like to be that to be that check and balance for treasurer. Like there's one person. Like, like most boards have a treasurer on the board. You, they usually they're a member of the board. A member That's of the board. That's what they've yeah. taken on. I just wonder if like well, any talent. I know. I don't, yeah. it's really I don't think that the treasurer is going to hurt me as a staff member. It's just like the incompatible ones. officers. Yeah. Right. They're yeah, I mean, I think they're officers. Yeah. They are. Like for a corporate board, you're correct. And, you know, for like a nonprofit. Yeah, nonprofits are also. For our committees. You know, secretary and treasurer. You right. know, like at yeah, every that's, level that is board. True, yeah. Except this one, apparently. Well, municipal government's a little different. <laughs> Where you're telling me. Lower on the hill. I, I, I would uh, support the town treasurer appointment. Is that, is that the question that was adding these possibly to the? Yeah, but I think they were on the spreadsheet, so I felt obligated to put them in the memo, but I personally don't think they're for this year. I think it's just they were on the spreadsheet. So I, felt like well, that. I think we need to talk about whether any of them should be on for this year. Um, Freemason? Because to the point, of, well, wait a second, because to the point of the track, the clerk being more easily filled. Do we want to talk about having a trailer or a center? And I'm not saying Rosemary is going anywhere because we know that at this point you're working, you're planning to work through the 26. <clears throat> yeah. When I brought these up in the meeting and put them on the sheet, it had nothing to do with change of personnel. It was, from my perspective, it gives a year for the voters to vote it down if they have issues with one thing or another. It gives us extra year to fix it. Kick it down to 25, the likelihood of it being voted down is very slim. The thing is, if, but, if it was on the ballot this year and it was voted down and we hear people in an uproar because Rosemary is not going to be our treasurer, it's a year's worth of time to fix it for the next time, saying, no, nobody said that. You know, we're not saying we're cutting, we're gonna appoint her to fill out that term that she was voted in for. You know, it could be, it could help rectify the communication. I have to believe that if Rosemary is supportive, if, you know somebody's going to say, Rosemary, what do you think about this? And if Rosemary says, I think it's a good idea, it's going to happen. Whether it's this year or next year. That, that's just my opinion. And, you know, she's so well respected in the community that I can't imagine anybody saying, let's not do this because we don't want to. So. The idea of putting it on this year versus next year, to me, a lot of that depends on, I, I could support that only if we agree in advance to offer Rosemary a two-year contract to get her through 2026 when she plans to not run anyway. Am I correct on that? Um, is, that some, is that something that we can do? Would, wouldn't that be kind of... A, we could do it in concept. To, it would be a gentleman's agreement, and there'll be three returning members, which those. is the majority of the next board. Yeah. So if okay. those three members all agree, that you got a majority. the likelihood of it not happening is... To, so uh, we can't bind a future board, but we can... Well, we can be the majority. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I, I mean, I... I'll agree to that in concept, yeah. I guess my other concern <laughs> is, you know, whether you have strong feelings about whether it's this year versus next year. Because again, I think it's really important that Rosemary say, I'm supportive of this concept. And if she's not and says so, it's not going to happen. And, and yeah, I agree, Doug. Do you think it would feel better to do it next year versus this year, Rosemary? Uh, My personal so? opinion, I would feel better, more comfortable having it next year. But that's up to the board. Do it yeah. next year. Next year yeah. it is. But don't do it 26. Like, 
that that recommendation you could you could have somebody that got so, twenty two signatures that was on the ballot to become an elected <laughs> clerk and treasurer. Yeah, I don't care about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, it's just, you, that's a terrible you, recommendation. I'm still unclear if the thirty day thing is. I think that's for a town manager. No, it's simple because you, if you vote, you, a resident could get a petition and have a revote, which is due in thirty days. I see. Yeah, and I think isn't there a forty day clock, forty five day clock for yes. for the board? So it puts us in the position of having to re replace the elected clerk with an appointed clerk <coughs> with a forty five day time clock. We looked it up. <coughs> yeah. yeah, and I don't think we want to be in that position. Well, revisit that conversation. Well, that's Rosemary is the one who wants to do it. <laughs> Well, I'm, I, I had made a bad assumption. My bad assumption is that since she isn't running and beyond 26, that she wants to retire and get out of this business. Maybe that's a bad assumption. She wouldn't know. There you go. There you go. Please. <coughs> okay. The Freemasons question, Tom? I don't know. I'm the one that put it on there. For is that some the reason. Masonic Temple? Masonic yeah, Temple. That's on there already. He asked the question. Um, I guess you're good. just on the spreadsheet. That's why I, oh, okay. I thought, is that this year? I thought it was 2000. No, it's every five years. 18, so it's, this is the fifth year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would think that should go on and stay on. Yep. I mean, yep. You're giving us a pretty good deal for the library. Right yeah. Uh, the law enforcement article, could you? I had mentioned that in the past, so I don't know whether this got. So essentially what it is, is um, uh, the town has the ability, the voters have the ability to rescind um, the law enforcement powers and duties of constables. And if they do that, then the constables can still do things like animal control, they can still do ordinance enforcement, um, et cetera. They, they can't carry an AK-47 and put a blue light on their car and stop people with, for, you know, speed patrols. Um, so it does, it does limit the ability of a constable to perform law enforcement activities, but they can still serve civil process, they can still, you know, do animal control, et cetera, et cetera. Duncan, have you already done that? Or was that just a select board saying you couldn't do that? That's, That's the select board. That was the select board just saying that they had a job description that prevented and that and 50 cents, I guess, will get you a cup of coffee somewhere. Where can you get a cup of coffee for 50 cents? Well, Are you like 75 years old? Two dollars and 50 cents. Three dollars and 50 cents. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can get a free coffee. Where I was going with that. Medium fry somewhere. There's another town <laughs> that did this. And I can't remember where, but could you? Do you Georgia know, did it. Do you have the language from that? Uh, if we want to do it, we can certainly come up with the language. It's it's right in the statute. So you think yeah. I'm supportive of the article if that's all we're doing for this conversation. Okay. Me three. Me three. So me two. Yeah. yeah. If we could get the language. So I'll get the language revealed. I'm gathering that's what you want from this list. Cross off. That's right. Know. I want to know what do I need to do so that Rosemary can put it on the warning. Reserve fund for paving. Agreed. Come up with a Disagree. come up with a wording. Why? I think we Why? should actually come up with a full asphalt capital plan. Yeah, but this is about you have to get it under okay. reserve fund. Yep. Let's oh, get wait. more reserve funds. <coughs> I think I'm agreeing with you again tonight. What? Oh, you guys are best friends. Asphalt reserve plan. That we create one, or that we yeah should... a paving mm -hmm. reserve That's plan. Exactly. That's he had oh, one. Gosh. I well, like we've that reserved Evan, I'm with you. That's good money. I don't necessarily believe that it will stabilize the tax rate because we're already doing it. We're just carrying money. I'm glad you find it. The reserve fund, I like better. I don't know. Exactly. I like the reserve. How much better will you do it? Yeah, yeah it's, almost like, it's almost like I said that yeah. a year ago. Do you know that $12,000 that Jason was talking about? That can all go, you know, like, all go to yeah, I don't, I don't Okay, know do we want to do this or not? Yeah, everybody's saying yes or no? Hold on there. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, we're, we're going. going. But do we want both lines to go into it? Both lines or are we one? talking about? 
I think that's something that you guys think they could. Yeah, well, every year you guys are going to vote on the unexpended amount. And so you can add it or you can say, you know, we don't want to put it in. Yeah, but it's going to be, you have to make an actual. What do you mean, vote? This on is the not, unexpended amount. Wait a second. This is just about creating a reserve fund. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just like helping uh, Evan understand, like, the Yeah, but when we create it, don't we say how it's funded in the article? Yeah, so, so I'm talking about. How it's going to be created? And so I think just like you know, Rosemary takes there's thirty thousand dollars for something that goes to the capital building fund every year. So every oh, small equipment small purchase, equipment. small equipment purchases for the office. That's right. And so like that, you know, it's kind of the same idea, but just a different account. You know. No, I understand the idea. My question is, do we want two lines in the budget to go to it or one? And the only reason I'm asking that question. Four lines? As many as possible. Like, the reason I'm asking that question is because we're going to work on wording, and next meeting, I'm going to want wording that aligns with. I do not agree with four lines because we don't have that. I think he was being sarcastic. He was being sarcastic. He was yanking your chain. But the thing is that it just be one line. We could go down to one line, payment. It's just a matter of it's maintenance or capital. And we get grant funding for most lots of APAB we do anyway. We need, I to, would, we need I to would, allow requests into it as well. I would advocate that, not that we have to do it, but if we have it in the authorizing language, we, we, at some point in time, we may want to actually have a line item for a set amount of money to go into a paving reserve fund. That's, that's how I used to do it. Is, so the only line you had to expend to paving was a contribution to the for treatment fund, and then all paving was paid for out of the treatment fund. And so instead of having a line to expend on paving and maintenance, you just paid that out of the treatment fund and just always fund the fund, the fund pays for it, fund the fund pays for it. And then you're tracking the expenditures, and that's going to increase over time, so you match this, so they go together, and that's how you stabilize the tax rate. And that's what your capital plan is. So then you're matching your AOT grant cycles, you're matching your grants and aid cycles, they're all lining up together. And then you can, you have like those two accounts that are gonna go like this. That's that's the idea, so that way you're always but you're funding the fund whether you're paying a hundred thousand out of a line for capital improvement or you're paying to a contribution, it doesn't matter. And I don't know why I even make the article get in the weeds that much. I think shall we create a fund for retreatment for the purpose of Paving and maintenance of, of travel roads, of class two roads or something, you know? But I think if you look at the statutory language, I think you have to define where you're going to get the funds from. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can you do have to double check. Where There's model going. articles on VLCT, I think probably for both of these. I think we're just going to take it and then we're just going to modify it to match Johnson. To, and that, and that could, yeah, most of ours would all say, like, to be funded annually by unspent funds and surplus. Well, pretty much how that would. Yeah. I think we actually created one. We created a reserve fund. It's like we created two last year. Last year. Yeah, we yeah. created two last year. Yeah, we should just look at last year's. We got at least one year. Great match reserve. Yeah, I probably do. Yeah. So there's, there's. We need to allow requests. And I didn't, I didn't specifically. Yeah, the reserve fund. Oh. All right, so you've got the, the final one is reserve for, for, for. I don't understand. Oh, um, don't talk about putting it. Funds, but. I think you talked about putting it in the grant match that reserve would be fund. my suggestion because yeah. you already got a reserve fund. And you guys didn't decide that. So this was the time, like, do you want a special fund? Now's yeah. the time to create it, or let's just say the heck with it and put it in the grant match fund. But no, that's, we should use our existing fund for that. Yeah. Um, Are you talking about our money? Yeah. 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 I found Duncan's email where. Katie Buckley was talking about it, and she thought that was fine. Put it into the grant. I think yeah. somebody yeah. specifically mentioned that. Yeah. Was it you or somebody else? I don't think. Yeah, it was me. That was a Duncan, yeah. yeah. Because there wasn't a motion, and it was like, now's the time. If you're going to do something different, you got to do it. Gotcha. Yeah. So there's one, there's one that maybe you could research, or maybe you and Rosemary could research, and that's, I've, I've talked with Rosemary about um, the current or the tax anticipation reserve fund. My question is, is the wording, the existing wording that established that tax anticipation reserve fund broad enough
to allow us to use that to help with cash flow? And I don't know the answer to that. I, I, I'm not sure that you know the answer to it either. No. Do you but want me to call VLCT on that or do you enjoy? Yeah, but we need to find the. Well, I think we're wording that was in the, <coughs> the original wording. Yeah. Do you know about that was in your time? Oh, yeah. That's what the person Duncan did, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll look back there. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Rosemary and I can do it together. I want to say it was 2003 <laughs> or 4, maybe. Little, little speaker phone action? That actual language, if you have a copy of the capital budget and plan, that wording is in there. So if, if, if you can find a copy of that. This is that same one that it hasn't been updated since that. It's the one that hasn't been updated since forever. Yeah. Um, but that wording is in there. And if, if, it, if the opinion is that it is not flexible enough to allow it to be used as cash, uh, you know, um, cash flow requirements, we might want to consider amending. One year in future, we went through and renamed every flow. single reserve fund to make it match the statute. And so it's super easy. We could, we could do that even in real time at the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Just for so budget capital plan, wording to match to make available for cash flow. Is the current is the wording currently flexible enough to enable the treasurer to use that money for cash flow requirements? And if not, how could we change or amend it to allow it to be used for cash flow? That's a good addition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rosemary, are you gonna tell me what you want me to do? Did that mm -hmm. no, we talked about that? Yeah, because one of my questions in one of the meetings was like, could we use oh, yeah. the tax anticipation reserve fund for, and I didn't say like cash flow, it's like reimbursable expenses from FEMA or something. But I thought it was looked into and the language was too restrictive. That's a good one. Up next. Anybody else have anything? No. The draft warning. Roll names for college apartments. <laughs> this is in the package. Uh, <coughs> in the, on page 13, Justin gives two options. <coughs> um, he, did, he did his due diligence uh, following <coughs> the I would move to accept his recommendations. Road change names, road name changes. Do we need to list this specific? Uh, I can. Badger Drive, Hermit Thrush Drive, Robin Drive, Hawk Drive, Eagle Drive, Hastings Drive. <laughs> okay. If you want, it. you want to make an amendment? <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'll, I'll second Duncan. <laughs> We should just name them after ourselves. So that we have, well, there is five, you know. All right. So there's a motion on the floor. Did you second that? I did. All right. Motion and second. Is there any real discussion, Mark? <laughs> no. That's... All right. Seeing none, that's going to call the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have it. It very efficiently got us through this. Yeah. Skate Park Committee appointment. Recommendation was received from the Skate Park Committee. Alexa Daniels, it looks like her. Yes, Alexa. Are you Alexa? Would you like to report? <laughs> uh, Casey did your due diligence and following the appointment policy. <laughs> <laughs> really, I want everybody to meet everybody. Yeah, really Alexis, we yeah. meet like every Monday. Every. Don't, don't say that out loud. <laughs> They're very.